how can reluctance to look at the precise ways we think and act destructively make us less destructive? Yeah, do not be afraid to look. You know, we don't look. We don't look so much of the time. We think we might be sick, we don't want to check it out, we're a little bit afraid of that. We have an angry thought, or we're upset about the news media, I don't want to go, I don't want to look at that, I turn off the TV, as if that's going to make it go away. I'm afraid, you know, there's so much anger out there, I'm going to stay away from that person. I, and again, I'm not saying you can't do any of this in form, but what I want you to do is not be afraid to look at why you don't want to look. And look at it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't, it becomes more destructive in your mind. If we do not face these things, they don't just go away. If we do not look, they become stronger in our minds because we've made them so strong in our minds. They're scary, I don't want to look. They're big and bad, I don't want to look. And so they become scarier, and they become bigger, and they become badder. And it all stops when we default back to our reality. But we can't default back as long as we believe those things are stronger than our reality. So we have to look and affirm in the face of that eternal holiness abides in me. I love the stories of Jesus. That's why I always say, you know, we're grateful for his example because there's some good stories in that Bible. You know, there's some good stories. And one of my favorite ones is the story of Lazarus because I don't know, you know, I mean, we may say Lazarus was dead, but at so many levels, there's so much more going on here. To me, Jesus calling forth Lazarus was saying that love can be called forth in the midst of death. Now, death is not just the death of a body. From the Course's perspective, we're dead when we do not know eternal holiness abides in us. When we dwell in anger, when we dwell in judgment, when we dwell in fear, we're dead to our reality. So we do not know this truth that is the answer to us. And so Jesus went in the face of death, God bless you, he went in the face of death and said to the thought of death, Lazarus, come forth. Death has no power over you. So to our dead thinking, to those things that frighten us so much, we need to say, love, come forth. Eternal holiness abides in me. We have to stop. And the Course would say this. This is very practical. It says you have to replace the lie with the truth. You look at it and then you replace. You don't just look at it and go, oh, that's terrible. No, you replace it with the truth. So in this circumstance where you're having challenges, if it's a relationship, eternal holiness abides in this. If you are having a physical problem, eternal holiness abides in this. Eternal holiness abides in this circumstance because that is the default, that is the truth. The other is simply an illusion, a lie. That's why you see at the very beginning of the text, what does it say? This course can be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. That's your eternal holiness. Nothing unreal exists. That's everything else. Herein lies the peace of God. That's the truth. The cores can be summed up in those three lines. But we have gotten so used to the other stuff. The stuff we've programmed into our computer, and we need to clean it out and get back to that default. You know, I don't know if you've ever had any problems with your computers. You ever had any problems with your computers? Ever have to have a computer guy come in and clean up your computer? Ever get bugs and all this other junk on your computer? Cookies are put all over the place and I, I thought they were something you ate. I thought, well, I wasn't eating cookies at my computer, but cookies are, when you visit a website, you drop a cookie and it comes and follows you. It's like gingerbread and the, you know, the, what, what's her name? The Hansel and Gretel thing or something. I don't know, but I mean, we, it's amazing to me how bogged down our computers get with all this junk that we've collected and we don't even know we do it, right? Did you know it? You don't know it until you see the effect of it. And then we see it. And so what this is saying is we see the effect by, are you at peace? If you're not at peace, then you've, you've got a lot of crap kind of attached to you. A lot of stuff has gotten stuck on you, 
and we need to kind of have a good technician come in there and clean out our computer, right? That's what they get. They come in and do, right? Amaze what they do. They get in there and they're just going like, oh, you got cookies here and you got this there and you got that. Let's get rid of that. Let's put this thing. Up. We're, we're done. Hey, you're back to running good. And for some reason, they did something magical and there it was. My computer's up and running. Why is, and we go, wow, how did that happen? Well, you know what? The Holy Spirit can do exactly the same thing. You don't need to know how he does his job. It's not your job not your job to know how he does his job your job is to say i don't want all the other junk i want that default eternal holiness abides in me that's what i want and you can't you go it cannot be that simple yes it can because truth is not hard illusion is complex very complex but truth is not hard this is the truth and in the face of this mighty truth illusion falls